Hey everyone, welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm Chris Lee Kennedy, and this is the show where we bring you the day's biggest movie news, and of course, we give you insight into what it all means. Joining me, as always, is AMC Movie News Senior Editor, Mr. John Campia. Greetings and salutations, everybody. I give you uh, my greetings from my uh, home office today. We're working remotely, but we're still looking forward to doing the show. And joining us also is director of the upcoming film, The Death of Superman Lives. What happened? Mr. John Schnepp. Hey, what's going on, everybody? All right, guys, today we're going to get things started with this. With Fast and Furious 6 taking in over $700 million worldwide, it should come as no surprise that Sony wants in on the action. It's being reported that Sony will develop a feature film based on the video game franchise Gran Turismo. The sixth installment of the successful video game franchise is set to hit stores later this year. Disney is also already on the car race movie train as they are nearing completion of their video game based movie, Need for Speed. John, what do you think of Sony developing a Gran Turismo movie? All right. Well, okay. So let's get this out of the way. Let's get the the, the gag out of the way. The copycat thing, right? I mean, Fast and Furious 6 does well. So now Need for Speed is getting made. Actually, our own Amy Rosen Eisenbach just flew out to Detroit to do a set visit with Aaron Paul and the other cast of Needs for, Need for Speed. So they're doing one video game-based race, race car movie. And now Sony announces they're going to go do Gran Turismo. I remember playing Gran Turismo, I think, back in, like, 1998 or something like that, like, on the original PlayStation. Um, fun game. At the time, it was am- Like, it blew my mind at the time. Um, but honestly, the copycat thing... You know, some of the greatest inventions and some of the greatest movies have kind of come from being copycats if you can take something and improve upon it and make it better. But can this be as good as Fast and the Furious 5 or Fast and the Furious 6? Well, actually it can be because if you think about the video game, there is no real story to it. I mean, not really. There's not, there's not a big narrative, which means all they're doing is taking the concept of Gran Turismo. They're just taking the concept and they have the freedom to get some really good screenwriters and build their own story around it. So really it's going to be a car-based movie that just happens to wear the label of Gran Turismo. So therefore, I think this film is going to have about as good of a chance as any to be you know, sharp and to be good and to be watchable and just as much opportunity to suck at the same time. But I personally, I really don't have a problem with them doing it. Schnepp, what do you think about it? Uh... Car racing is one of my least favorite sports on the planet. I specifically didn't see the Pixar movie Cars because, oh, it's these cars going around in a circle. <laughs> I mean, I, I just – I have never gotten car racing ever. Since a kid all the way to being a grown man, I don't understand it. Like, I, I get it now. To be honest, now I watch sometimes like three minutes of it just because they have – mini cameras all installed everywhere so you have like that ground level shot and then the dude shaking and then so they have all these really cool shots of a car going around in a circle repeatedly (laughs) with other cars so you know thor was in that car movie that came out this past summer didn't see it so you know the only movies that i actually like that involve oh dude that that movie hasn't even come out that movie hasn't come out yet oh it hasn't no i just I saw a commercial for it. I was like, there's Thor. He's in, like, some weird racing suit. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> um, that's just me, though. I'm like, it's, it's like not – I'm just – I'm not anti-car. I'm anti-car racing to me. So I'm like, I'm, like, in some minority. Please don't hate on me if you like watching cars go around in circles. Um, <laughs> or hate on me, please. I bring it. Uh, I'm just saying um, – Need for Speed sounds awesome because it's not a car racing movie. It's a bunch of characters and gangs who use cars to do things as well as race. It's like – so that's why like Fast and Furious works. It was a car racing movie that was about all these other things that also involved drifting and all this kind of racing and so – and also criminal activity. So <laughs> Gran Turismo just – you know, I played it too. It's a cool game. The texture mapping looked awesome. Like, it was like, wow, it's really amazing how they had that lighting and stuff. It's like, I don't know how that translates into a, uh, a movie. So, unless it's about car racing. So, <laughs> I mean, because that's what Gran Turismo is. It's like, it's a heist movie wrapped inside of a giant, gra- you know, Gran Turismo. It's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's a, I'm, I, I'm not into it. That's all I can say. All right. What do we got next? Expendables 3 is set to hit AMC theaters everywhere on August 15th, 2014, and is scheduled to go into production next month. 
Jackie Chan, Wesley Snipes, Nicolas Cage, and Mila Jovovich are in final negotiations to appear in the film. But you can add three more names to the cast. UFC champion Ronda Rousey, boxer Victor Ortiz, and Twilight star Kellen Lutz have all officially joined the new film. Lutz is also set to star as Hercules in the upcoming film Hercules 3D, not to be mistaken with the other Hercules movie in production starring The Rock. Schnepp, what do you think of these names being added to the Expendables 3? I love Jackie Chan. I love Wesley Snipes. I love Nicolas Cage and Mila Jovovich. Um, Ronda Rousey's an incredible talent. She's a, a, a fierce fighter. She's beautiful. I'm all for adding her. That's great. Victor Ortiz, incredible boxer. <laughs> I don't know about his acting chops, but, I mean, you know, you throw Ronda in and, you know, they're going to have minimal lines. I'm sure he'll be great. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any of the Twilight movies. We've discussed this before. Still haven't seen how many, how many are there? Eight? I don't even know. <laughs> um, Twenty-five. Once, there, once they get the box set, the deluxe Blu-ray and stuff, maybe me and Campy will all have a big like popcorn party and watch them all. <laughs> That's probably the only way it'll ever happen. So Lutz could be an awesome actor. He's going to be uh, you know, The Rock as Hercules and then this kid as Hercules. So. That's going to be an interesting battle when those both those movies come out on the same weekend. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, thanks. I don't think they're coming out on the same weekend. Uh, but you know, Colin, <laughs> they should. Yeah, same weekend. Hercules yeah. 3D, and I can't remember something something the Thracian Wars or whatever is the is the rock one. Okay. Um, the thing about Kellen Lutz, and, and I'll say this for for the guy, I said um, before the last Twilight film came out, I remember saying, "Laugh all you want." But I believe five years from now, out of all these kids in Twilight, uh, including the big popular ones, I believe Kellen Lutz will be the only one that still has an active, thriving career in the business. Um, I th- I liked his little jaunt as Poseidon in Immortals. I mean, obviously the dude's got a great look. He's big. He's bulky. He's I think he's actually got pretty decent acting chops, even though he was put into something like the Twilight films. Hercules right. will tell us a lot. Um, this is going to be our first opportunity on a big scale to see him. But I want to talk about Ra- Ronda Rousey for a second. Ronda Rousey, for those of you who don't know, like I, I know I, Dennis and I are complete mixed martial arts fanatics and, and whatever, but Ronda Rousey is the single most badass woman ever to, ever to walk on the planet Earth. I, I don't think there's ever been a woman that could ever fight her. And I doubt that there are 15% of the men on this planet that could last more than two minutes in a cage with this girl. She is like wow. a marketing guy's dream because she is the absolute best at what she does. She can kill a lot of men if she wanted to <laughs> like that. At the same time, she's beautiful. Like she's, she's a beautiful woman. Uh, and, and, you know, watching her, uh, I think it was on Showtime. I can't remember if it was Showtime or or uh, HBO or something that did the does the pre UFC stuff when they do the like the behind the scenes half hour documentaries. She's got a really interesting story as well. An Olympic bronze medalist in judo, first American woman ever to do that. So I mean, she can just fight you and destroy you in a lot of ways. So I'm really excited. As far as those other names that are in final negotiations, it feels like Jackie Chan and Nicolas Cage and Wesley Snipes. It feels like they've been in final negotiations for like six months now. Just say right. they got to start shoot. They're going to start shooting this thing next month. So they got to get on board with this and get this thing rolling. Uh, but as far as Ortiz goes, I'm not a boxing guy, so I, I could care less. I don't know who he is. I don't care who he is. I'm sure he's a wonderful human being, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm intrigued by Kellen Lutz and I'm really stoked to see Ronda Rousey in it. So right. tick, Tickets to Bulgaria have been purchased. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Well, it's time for that part of the show called Buy and Sell. Here's how this is going to work. In front of her, Chris Lee's got a bunch of other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down, and Schnepp and I are simply going to say whether we buy it or if we sell it. So, Chris Lee, what do we got? The new Aubrey Plaza comedy, The To-Do List, opens in AMC theaters on July 26th and just released this new official poster for the film. The movie follows the story of Brandy Clark, played by Aubrey Plaza, a type A overachiever who comes up with a to-do list featuring all the risque extracurricular activities she missed out on in high school and wants to compete before college. John, buy or sell this poster for the to-do list. I have to sell this poster. I, I think I think this poster to me... Now, I'm coming from the point of view that I've seen the film. I saw it back in April. And frankly, I, I really enjoy it. It's not going to be for everybody. It's one of the dirtiest films um, 
I've seen in a long time. Um, but I thought it was kind of bold and daring and funny and cute. And, and of course, we were talking about Clark Gregg on the show yesterday. He's one of the guys, and he plays Aubrey Plaza's dad. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, Bill Hader is really funny in it. Bill Hader's wife actually wrote and directed the film. Um, and like, it's really charming. It's a very low budget film, very charming, but this poster to me, number one kind of looks corny to me. I know some people are liking it, but most importantly, I don't think this poster at all captures what the movie is or what the movie's about or the feel of the film at all. Schnepp, what do you think? I got to be honest, I really love the poster. It reminds me of like Porky's or Meatballs or yeah. those like crazy like 80s comedies, uh, Caddyshack. It just has that flavor to it. In fact, there I saw another poster online that was similar. It was like a cartoony, almost mad magazine Jack Davis drawing with all the other characters like poking their heads out and she was standing there with her list. So I don't know. I mean, I really like it. It, 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 it definitely reminds me of that. You know, those old 80s comedies that were, weren't afraid to, like, go really blue really quick. Like, I believe the word Sanchez is probably in the to-do list yes. somewhere. So yeah. I'm just – my guess. So it's like – haven't seen the movie, but I, I'm going to see it. And you know it's like what? A- and maybe that's my problem. Maybe the problem is, is that I have seen the movie, and so I'm looking for a poster that that you know represents the film, and I'm not just accepting the poster for what it is. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. Right. I have to say that at the to-do list party, their giveaway gift when you left was uh, pineapple juice and jelly beans. So I can only imagine what that comes from in the movie. And I'm a little yeah. scared. That totally reminds me of the 80s movies. Trust me, there is right. meaning in the movie to the pineapple juice. I knew about, it. I knew it. What about it. the jelly beans? And the jelly beans. Yeah. It's a strange re- reference to Tom Baker's Doctor Who, who always <laughs> hated to have jelly beans. Wrong. <laughs> All right. What's sure. next? Academy Award winning writer Aaron Sorkin's script for The Trial of the Chicago 7 may finally be getting produced. Reports have emerged that director Paul Greengrass is in negotiations to helm the film based on the true story of the events and violence surrounding the 1968 Democrat Party convention with an anti-Vietnam War carnival that turned nasty. Greengrass has previously directed such films as United 93, the Matt Damon Bourne trilogy, and the upcoming Tom Hanks film, Captain Phillips. Schnepp, buy or sell Greengrass joining the trial of the Chicago 7. 100% buy it. I think uh, Paul Greengrass is an incredible director. I loved his Bourne movies. Mm -hmm. I really liked United 93. He's also done uh, Bloody Sunday, which is another protest, cops fighting... uh, like riot style thing that happened in Ireland. So he's got, he's, he's all ready to direct this movie. And I, I like his directing style. Some people have problems with the shaky cam handheld stuff, but that's going to kind of fit in really well with the Chicago riots when Lyndon B. Johnson was just like, you know, just all the, all the madness that happened back then. I mean, it's like, if you've seen the footage, you can go on YouTube and like, you know, click and watch some of the actual real footage that was shot. It's horrific. So I think it's going to be a great film. Yeah, I got to buy this too. Green Grass, not only you're talking about United 93, and like a lot of people don't understand how delicate of a film that was to make. There, there had to be so many sensitivities he had while still striving to make an artistically pleasing film, and he did a masterful job with it. And I'm really looking forward to this Tom Hanks film. And yeah, this is a story that needs to be told. The fact that it's written by Sorkin just kind of adds to my intrigue by it. So for me, yeah. it's an absolute buy. Yeah. Four new character posters for the upcoming Keanu Reeves film, 47 Ronin, have been released. From ancient Japan's most enduring tale, the epic 3D fantasy adventure 47 Ronin is born. Keanu Reeves leads a cast as Kai, an outcast who joins Oishi, played by Hiroyuki Sanada, the leader of the 47 Ronin. (laughs) Together, they seek vengeance upon the treacherous overlord who killed their master and banished their kind. To restore honor to their homeland, the warriors embark on a quest that challenges them with a series of trials that would destroy ordinary warriors. 47 Ronin hits AMC theaters everywhere this Christmas. John Byer sell these posters for 47 Ronin. You know, I got to tell you, there's there's been a small part of me that has been mocking this film a little bit in the back of my head. Um, but I buy these posters. I think these posters look awesome. And, and look, and I've said this before in the show, an old style Asian film about, you know, a bunch of warriors on the hunt to seek revenge for the people who killed their master. That movie's been done a thousand times, and it should be done a million times because <laughs> it's right. always awesome. I buy this. I think Keanu Reeves actually looks great in this poster. I love the design. The dude with the skull tattoo on his head. That yeah. looks pretty cool. So, yeah, for me all around, this is a, this is a pretty big buy. What about you, Schnepp? 
Yeah, all four posters are great. I mean, you know, the one with Keanu is the least of the coolest ones just because you're like, oh, there's Neo again. Only he's got a beard. He's, you know, got the sword. It's like, it's, but I'm excited about the movie. I think it's going to be insane. I think Gran Turismo should, like, rip off the plot of 47 Ronin, (laughs) only make it about car racing. So that's what, but anyway, I think, uh, yeah, 47 Ronin, I can't wait to watch it. And the posters really helped sell it for me, especially the upside, upside down girl. You know, it's like some intrigue in poster design, you know? Yeah, I agree. And if they can figure out a way to put in, I, I mean, I know it's cheesy, just figure out a way at some point to have all the other, you know, samurai look at him and say, you know, why should we have you? If, for him to look at the screen and says, because I know Kung Fu. If he then put that in, <laughs> I'm sold. I'm totally sold. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A new trailer has just come out for the upcoming film Gravity, which is set to open in AMC theaters everywhere on October 4th. Dr. Ryan Stone, played by Sandra Bullock, is a brilliant medical engineer on her first shuttle mission with veteran astronaut Matt Kowalski, played by George Clooney, in command of his last flight before retiring. But on a seemingly routine spacewalk, disaster strikes. The shuttle is destroyed, leaving Stone and Kowalski completely alone, tethered to nothing but each other and spiraling out into the blackness. The deafening silence tells them that they have lost any link to Earth and any chance for rescue. As fear turns to panic, every gulp of air eats away at what little oxygen is left. But the only way home may be to go further out into the terrifying expanse of space. Schnapp, buy or sell this new trailer for Gravity. 100% buy it. I can't wait to see this movie. And every time a little bit more footage, like the first teaser trailer... I was like, when is this movie coming out? And it's been in production for years, and it's been delayed an entire year. So, I mean, it's really kind of torture. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm almost feeling like they're like, yes, we were just kidding. It's not coming out until 2015. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. Here's three more teaser trailers and additional sequences, you know, peppered out over the seven more years. 2023. No! I can't wait to see it. It looks... It looks incredible, and I think Gran Turismo should should use this as maybe a plot device. <laughs> have cars going around the Earth, like build like a Hot Wheels track around the Earth, and then one of the cars like loses control and goes spinning out. I don't know. <laughs> this movie looks incredible. That that commercial that they show, it's a it's one unending shot of horror. So I mean, I can't wait to see it. Uh, oddly enough, I'm gonna sell it, and and the reason I'm selling is I also am really looking forward to this film. I cannot wait to see it, and I love the footage they showed us at CinemaCon back in April. But the reason I'm gonna sell this is because I feel like this is the same trailer I've already seen. I, I, I get it, okay? They're they're screwed, and I love that feeling that you get. I love it when a movie gives you that feeling of. These people are completely screwed. And you get that sense, but it's the same one I already got from the previous trailer. So even though I'm still dying to see it and I cannot wait to get out to see it, for me, this one particular trailer is going to have to be a a sell. John, what what if they added a car? Uh, Now, if they found a space car, perhaps perhaps even a Winnebago being driven by a John Candy Mog... That would be awesome. I'm With totally on board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, listen, we've reached out point in the show for mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Now, we get around to two or three questions a day, but also on the weekends we do AMC Mailbag, which is just mailbag questions. So maybe your question will get answered on this show. Maybe it'll get answered on Mailbag. Take a shot. Send us your question. Send us the best one you got. So for now, Chris Lee's got a couple of questions pulled out of the mailbag. So Chris Lee, what do we got? Emilio V writes, Hey, guys, love the show and love your cast. One of DC's other big announcements, aside from Batman vs. Superman, was that they have a Flash movie in the works. Now, a few fan-made posters have been saying that Charlie Hunnam should take up the role, but I don't see it. Who do you guys think should take on the role, and which incarnation of Flash do you think they'll go with? Um, well, let's first things first. That I've gotten a lot of people writing me, hey, now that WB has announced they're doing Flash into the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Warner Brothers has not announced that they're doing Flash in 2016. Let's make that very, 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 very clear. Warner Brothers has not announced that they're doing a Flash in 2016. There was a report that came out um, while we were at Comic-Con from from a news source saying that, hey, you know, Warner Brothers and DC are planning on doing a uh, Flash film in 2016 and a Justice League in 2017. Okay, 
But then the WB panel came at Comic-Con and they made no such announcement and um, didn't give any, any indication to doing that at all. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. That doesn't mean it's not true. But what isn't true is that Warner Brothers has announced. They haven't. So as of right now, uh, there is a rumor of a Flash film in 2016, but it has absolutely not been announced by Warner Brothers and was not announced at Comic-Con. So, okay, now that we got that part of the way, what would I think about a Charlie Hunnam? Well, uh, here, I'm just going to do this quick. See my hat? <laughs> I am a huge Sons of Anarchy fan. I love <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. Um, and I really like Charlie Hunnam in it. But I'm a little dubious right now on Charlie Hunnam's overall acting chops. You know, sometimes you can get somebody who's not a very good actor, but put them in a certain role that works for them. And then you can think they're great, but then they have to go into other roles and you just can't see them as anything else but that first role because that's really what they're limited to. When I saw Pacific Rim, which I loved, by the way, and you should go out and see it 10 times, um, all I really saw was Jax, the name of Charlie Hunnam's character in uh, in Sons of Anarchy. I half expected to see Clay and Tig and Opie ride around the corner <laughs> with some shotguns, <laughs> with some Irish guns shooting at the kaiju yeah. or something like that. Um, and man, I'm telling you, this dude has a very, very hard time. I love Charlie, but this dude has a really hard time, even in the show, disguising his Australian accent. What's going on, bro? I mean, you could hear him fighting his accent all the way. But, but I'm not saying he's not a great actor. I'm just saying... I wasn't able to see it in Pacific Rim. We do need to see him more. I, so I don't know that I'd make Charlie my number one pick to be in a Flash. But all that being said, I think we need to see this next Man of Steel film that's going to have Batman in it to really get a sense about what is the temperature and tone that DC and Warner Brothers is going for in these films with their interactions with their heroes before I think we can really formulate an idea about who we'd like to see play the Flash. Because d depending on the type of movie it's going to be, that'll change our predictions or our picks for the character itself. So I'm not bold enough at this point to make a prediction other than say I'm not really big on the Charlie Hunnam pick right now. What do you think, Schnepp? Uh, actually, Charlie Hunnam is, was born and acted in England. But that's oh, the accent, okay. That, that's the accent you hear him fighting. So I'm kind of impressed that he, like he's able, like as Jax, you don't really get that English guy. So he's he no. he is a good actor. He's a pretty boy good actor. But I mean, him as Flash, it does I don't I, it doesn't ring for me either. Uh, I mean, I remember a couple of years back, I was like Bradley Cooper would be a good Flash because he's got a little bit he's humorous, but he could also play a real good role. I mean, at this point, I, I don't like know. the Bradley Cooper name actually. Yeah, I mean. It's kind of hard to think. Like, maybe Ryan Reynolds. He hasn't really done a bunch of superhero stuff recently, has he? <laughs> no, I didn't go see Ripped yet, so I'm, I'm planning on Ripped. Actually. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know. I haven't really put too much thought into uh, who would be playing The Flash. Just because I'm so excited about the Batman Superman movie using Frank <laughs> Miller. That, that Man, that's that was really cool. So, um, I don't know. They could, Jack Black as Flash. He's just constantly eating hamburgers. He's like, hey, I got to, you know, it's metabolism, bro. You know? Chris Lee, I know you're a big fan of uh, Sons of Anarchy. I know you do a Sons of Anarchy after show and stuff like that. What, what would you think about Charlie Hunnam and something like that? You know, I love Charlie, and I do think that he's a really great actor, and I have not seen Pacific Rim yet, and I'm going to see it this week, so what? I can't judge based on that. I know I'm horrible, but as much as Go I love it. Charlie... I don't think he has superhero chops at all. Like, I think he's great at a lot of things, but I don't think superhero is one of them. All right. Well, what do we got next? Jameson Placken writes, my name is, hi, my name is Jameson, and I love AMC Movie Talk. My question is, I heard rumors of J.J. Abrams leaving Star Wars Episode Seven due to disagreements on certain things. What are your thoughts on that? And if he really does leave, who do you think they should get to replace him? Um, okay, this is another thing we need to set straight right now. Yes, there was a report going around, a rumor that was started by a particular website um, that, hey, you know, and it's one of these rumors where it's it's covering your own butt rumors. It's like, hey, I'm hearing from here and I'm hearing from here and I'm having all these sources telling me J.J. Abrams is walking away. Well, uh, anyway, Disney and Lucasfilm put out a statement together saying, um, the, the, and most of the time, like these, these studios and whatever won't even address these rumors. They'll just ignore them. But this one, they actually came out and put out a statement that says, there is absolutely no truth to these rumors. JJ's having a great time working on these films, and we're looking forward to going into production. So you can write that one off. 
Um, because you know, part of the the thread of the rumor was that, or of this rumor was that JJ was unhappy with the fact that they were going to be shooting the film overseas and he didn't want to be away from his family for all that long. Okay, I get that, but J.J. knew all that before he signed on. Like, he knew where they were going to shoot the film and that Star Wars has always shot a lot of this stuff overseas. He knew all that going in, and knowing that, he accepted the deal. So I don't know why anybody would believe at this point that, oh, suddenly J.J. changed his mind. Um, It would also be a pretty dick thing for J.J. Abrams to do at this point. Uh, if you didn't want to do it, he should have said no a long time ago. But I, I don't believe the rumor. I don't think it's true. I mean, look, stranger things have happened. We've seen, we've just recently seen that Jane got a gun movie, right? With Natalie yep. Portman, that a director on the first day of shooting just decided not to show up. I mean, so it's it's not like it's never happened before. But no, I believe Disney and Lucasfilm. I don't believe there's any truth to this rumor at all. And I think we are completely safe and secure with J.J. J. Abrams. But Schnepp, you know, as a director yourself and as a filmmaker, let's say something like this did happen. Would Disney postpone this film, do you think? Star Wars Episode Seven, Or do you think they would scramble really quickly and get a replacement in? And if so, who do you think they would put in there? They would scramble really quickly and get a replacement. I, but let me just address, I also do not believe this rumor in the least bit because when I started hearing like, oh, he's, con- he's concerned about going to England for a year, it's like that is total bull because he's, he actually said how excited he is to be shooting in the legendary Pinewood Studios. Yeah. I mean, any one of us would like, what, uh, how many years do you need me to be at Pinewood? Seven? <laughs> yeah. I'm relocating everyone I know. Yeah. I'd be moving like 150 people. I'm like buying a condo so all my friends and all of my family <laughs> could be chilling with me while I'm rocking Star Wars. Yeah, Are you kidding that's a me? pretty big deal. Yeah, it's a gigantic deal. Here, we're giving you the keys to the global universe called Star Wars. I don't know. It's going to be shot in England for a year. Wee! That's not <laughs> happening. Anybody who believes that is crazy. Drink mm-hmm. some more Maalox. I don't know what's wrong with you. Stop. Think about it. So there's no way, unless there's some kind of crazy death threat from the alias people, like, we demand that you shoot the alias movie. Or, you know, it's like, <laughs> I don't understand how, like, that rumor would even begin. And also on top of that, yeah, that would be a horrible thing that he left Star Trek to go do Star Wars and he's not going to do either. Yeah. You know, I, it, I just, I, it's a silly, weird rumor. And I, I saw it get picked up everywhere. Everywhere was like, and also on a side note, J.J. Abrams might be leaving Star. Star. It's like, what? Why is everyone carrying this? It's so weird. Like, just somebody. We should just start start dumb rumors right now and just see how many people start, you know, carrying it around. Jack uh, Black is the Flash. You heard it here first on Ansel <laughs> Movie Talk. I heard it because he was mad that he didn't get to be Green Lantern, and Ryan Reynolds got Green Lantern because originally Jack Black was going to be Green Green Lantern. You know, Schnepp, it's funny. Out. You are the. Uh... The uh, fourth person to tell me that today. You are the fourth person today to tell me that Jack Black is actually going to be the new Green Lantern. Right. So you it, did it, hear that. I'm earlier. hearing it everywhere. I mean, yeah, it must be true. That. You heard it here be. first, folks. Yep, Jack Black is Green Lantern. And it's, uh, that movie's coming out before Superman Batman. I think it's going to come out next year. <laughs> so, yeah, no, J.J. Abrams is, is going to be directing Star Wars and probably the second and third, you know, seven, eight, and nine. I'm sure he'll end up doing those. Yeah. And, uh, if it did happen, though, if, if he did leave for some weird reason, whatever the reason would be, complications that happened with X-Men First Class, you know, now Brian Singer's doing it. So all kinds of things happen. And he was supposed to do X-Men Last Stand, and, and um, uh, you know, what's his name? The Rat, Rat came in and directed it. So it's like, uh, you know, if he, if he did have to leave, they'd get someone immediately of a high, high caliber. I mean, Brad Bird might be like, yo, I'm almost done with Post on my special secret Disney movie. I'm jumping over to this thing. You know, they'd get someone that everyone's minds would be blown and everyone would feel, okay, they got this guy. And also they've done so much pre-production at this point, storyboards, character designs, ship models. Everybody's working out right now. All the actors are getting in shape. They're going to be shooting very soon. So it's like one of those movies that it's on, the train has taken off. You know, it's, it's moving now towards the final destination. And it's sort of like you know, now that the whole team is on board, it's like I don't see it being a problem. It would be a big problem, kind of a big blow to the production if J.J. Abrams, who's like you know, the guiding force of it, had to leave in mid-production. So, you know, it would be a bummer, but they would totally not change their dates and move completely forward. It's locked in. Yeah. 
I agree. And you're probably look if it were to happen, like I said, stranger things have happened. We've seen it recently that really strange things happen. So even though it's not going to happen, if it were, yeah, I, I think they'd probably turn to people with Disney roots like a Brad Bird and Andrew Stanton. Uh, maybe look look back at Matthew Vaughn because yep. I know Matthew Vaughn wanted the gig. Uh, or maybe even a Ben oh, Affleck because yeah. I know Ben Affleck wasn't – I heard that Ben Affleck was their next guy had they not secured J.J. Abrams that Ben Affleck was going to be the next one. And I'd be all for any of those names. But – Sure. I, I'm pretty sure we can rest assured that that JJ is going to direct the new Star Wars. All right, folks. Well, that does it for us. We're all out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. But listen, while I got you, stop what you're doing. Take a second. Click the subscribe button. Become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It'll keep you up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news. And, of course, our daily AMC Movie Talk Show and our weekend AMC Mailbag Show. And listen while you're at it. Do me a favor. Click that thumbs up if you like this show. It's just a nice way of letting us know that you appreciate what we're doing. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash AMC Theaters. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash AMC Theaters. If you want an audio-only version of this show, look in the description of this video and you'll find links to our iTunes and our Stitcher radio. And listen... There's lots of great movies playing in AMC right now, Chris Lee, like Pacific Rim. You should get out and see Pacific Rim <laughs> tonight right. or a lot of the other ones that are there. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater, showtime, and movie ticket information. I want to thank, as always, first of all, our lovely host, Miss Chris Lee Kennedy. Chris Lee, where can people find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Lee. The one and the only Mr. John Schnepp. John, where can people find you? I'm at John Schnepp on Twitter and also uh, uh, Instagram. Just John Schnepp. Just type my name in. Follow my weird vines. So. <laughs> and thank you, guys. Most of all to you, the most important part of the show is not what we have to say. It's what you have to say. Make sure you jump down into the comments section below and leave your thoughts and opinions on any or all of the topics we discussed here today. Be respectful, but trust me, we read just about every single comment that gets put in there, so make sure you go and leave your thoughts there. So until next time, my name's John Campia for AMC Movie News, and until then... Bye-bye.